Well, hello and welcome everyone. We're live, it's Thursday, and this is DJ Tech Talk with me, Phil Morse. It's our Thursday live Q&A session from the studios of Digital DJ Tips. And the whole point of this today is for you to ask any questions at all about your DJ. You know, in our book, we talk about the five key steps to being a DJ, which are music, gear, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. Music is the, the music collection you're gonna play, the reason you're into this. Gear is like the techie stuff, how all this stuff works. If you're not sure how to use DJ gear, if you're not sure to plug stuff together, well, you know, you've gotta know that to DJ. The technique stuff is all about what you do on the gear. Playing out is how you perform and promoting yourself is how you get gigs. And if you've got those five things, then you're on the way to being a great DJ. And that's what we're all about, helping you become a great DJ and a great DJ producer. So as I always say, look, if you want a copy of this book, it's the Amazon bestseller on how to DJ. If you want a copy of it, you can have one for free. All you do is join Digital DJ Tips. Just go to digitaldjtips.com slash join and we will give you a copy as a thank you for being our latest Digital DJ Tips email member. Okay, so I'm Phil Morse, I'm the founder of the company and I'm here today to help you with any questions for the next half hour, 45 minutes, however long it takes. Uh, and as always, this is the best part of the week for me. It is really exciting to do this and I can't wait to get started. So what we're gonna do now is head over to the comment cam uh, and we are going to get our first uh, comments from people uh, who are already, I hope, asking questions. So welcome everyone. Uh, it is, as I say, pretty cool to be here. Let's just get onto the right camera there. Here we are. Uh, and as ever, there's a, a lot of people already asking questions and chatting away. So that's cool. Uh, a few early hellos then. Uh, to, I always like to say hello to the first person in. So to Savoin uh, on on YouTube, hello to you. We're on YouTube, Facebook group, Facebook page, Twitch, and on Mixcloud Live today as ever. So if you're watching us uh, on any of those places, uh, then good to have you. Hi to a brother named Sherm, DJ LV 2 d All our regulars are there on Mixcloud. Uh, DJ Menyo says, send me the copy. Uh, you get your copy as a free download when you join the uh, when you join the site, DJ Menlo over there on Mixcloud. So, hey, this is awful. Charlie says, yes, well, I th uh, we thought yesterday you were on Phil, then realized it was Wednesday, not Thursday, or it was Tuesdays and Thursdays. Anyway, you're here now, that's the important thing. And hi to all our regulars, Chris, Alex, Justin, Balaz, Tom, DJ G247 says, great book, Phil, over there on Twitch. So I'm glad you've enjoyed the book. Uh, so, First question, MWM phase, any opinions? This is a good question to ask right now because of course, well, you maybe don't know this, MWM phase is a uh, wireless DBS system uh, and it helps you to uh, scratch using any turntables without having to use the tone arms, without having to take scratch vinyl with you. So in theory, it's pretty easy to use and they've just had a major update. You're seeing it now on your screen, uh, which is uh, the reason that I'm imagining you're talking about this today. So what you do, you, what you can see on the screen there, you have those two little bits that are popping out of that box. They're all the right technical terms, by the way. I'm smiling. Uh, and uh, they pop onto your, the little holes pop onto your spindles on your turntables and they wirelessly broadcast back to that box, the phase box, which is plugged into your mixer. And that's how you can use it as a kind of DVS without using the tone arms. Uh, and we've just published this post because they've done a load of uh, changes to it. They've changed the way the wireless works, all designed to make it more stable. They've got a new update manager and all that kind of stuff. So what's my views on it? I think it is absolutely awesome. You know, when DJs first scratched, they used records and they used a tone arm with a needle on it, right? On a record. And then digital came along and it was time code vinyl, but it was still the tone arm. But then relative DVS came in. Now the difference between relative DVS and absolute DVS is if you're DJing with digital files, you have the special vinyl, which has only got computer code on it, which controls Serato or controls Tractor or controls Recordbox or Virtual DJ. But that vinyl can work in two ways. It can work like a real record where you put the needle down at the beginning and you're at the beginning of the MP3. And as you move the needle through the record, you get nearer the end of the MP3. And if you jog the turntable, it will jump like a normal, normal turntable will. Or that's called absolute mode. Or it can work in relative mode. And relative mode turns the turntable into a big jog wheel. So in other words, it doesn't matter where the tone arm is. That's ignored. It's the, the speed of movement forward or backwards that is being picked up by the software. So really, the needle is only telling it that. It's only feeding back that. And you don't really need a needle to do that. You can have this little thing, the little phase box, to plug on and do that job for you. It takes away any issues with the needles not picking up the time code vinyl signal properly and just makes it all more reliable. So yes, I think, you know, as soon as scratching moved into the kind of using the, the turntables as big 
posh jog wheels, if you like, uh, then, you know, the the ground was right for FaZe to come along. It did. It, it had a bit of a rocky start, although for most people, I think it was all right. You know, there was just a few issues with connectivity and stuff. But that seems to have all been ironed out now with the new uh, update to FaZe. And I think it's a really, really cool thing. And there's pictures, uh, there's like little videos on the on the internet of people driving with FaZe connected to their, or not actually driving, but sat in the car with FaZe connected to their steering wheels and using it to scratch. And there's lots of videos. We've done one at, at trade shows with people scratching with their clothes and stuff. Because this little thing doesn't need to be on a turntable you can scratch by turning it like this but yeah mwm phase it's a great piece of kit we would recommend it especially now it's had updates uh, all right then this is great there's so many questions here i know what's going to happen we're not going to be able to answer them all so i'm just going to do what i always do and go da, 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 and talk and talk and talk until we've done as many as we can by the way the piece of gear we've got in the studio today is the roland dj 707m uh, controller so if you've got any specific questions about that device uh, then do ask away i can answer them hopefully or at least have a go at it for you all right then so the next question is from dj adrian hargaden who says what's your views on sync people don't like it but some of the big names sync uh, right okay let's do this quickly uh, sync is just another function on your dj controller like looping like key mixing like key sync like uh, effects it can be used for good and it can be used for bad uh, to say you shouldn't use a function is just crazy stupid and anyone who says that needs to wake up. But what I would say is that it's a good idea to know how to manually beat mix. It's a good idea to know how to do it without using sync to help you because you never know when you're going to need that. You never know when you're going to be on DJ gear that doesn't have sync or the sync's not working properly or you're using files that aren't properly beat aren't properly beat gridded or you're playing disco or funk or rock or any style where the, the bpm does change a bit so sync is not generally useful in those situations and also it's it gives you a deeper understanding of djing you know i like to take pictures on a decent dslr camera but i love the autofocus i love the fact that it can pick out the eyes and keep them sharp when i'm moving around and taking pictures uh, and i love the way that it can balance the light for me but i also like to know how to set the aperture and the shutter speed myself just in case it's dark and I want to do something creative and you know the auto things are going to let me down so I think understanding just like a an accountant understands how to add up on paper before they use a calculator and a spreadsheet I think being able to do it is a good idea so what I would say uh, to you DJ Adrian Hargaden is learn to beat mix manually and all of our DJ courses by the way that's where they start uh, and then add in the new features of digital DJ. You know, sync takes away the need to monkey, like, like a monkey, line up the, the BPMs. You can do it like that. That gives you more free time to do other good, cool stuff on the gear. Uh, so, so yeah, that's it. In a, in a very short version, that's my views on sync. Uh, all right then, Chris uh, from Kings Lynn, good to have you here, Chris, says, uh, my son Liam would like any tips you have on speaking on the mic for the first time. Right, so three tips on speaking on the mic for the first time. It can be really, really nerve wracking when you're like, ah. So this is what I would say. Number one, practice. Do it in the mirror at home. Do it in the mirror with your hairbrush or your toothbrush. Just hold it up, look at, look at yourself in the eye and practice uh, because you will get better. The second thing I would say is write down what you want to say. So if you are doing requests at a party and people are asking you to name drop people, it's their birthday or their anniversary or whatever, so you don't go, and this is going out for, because what happens is you get what I call game show dumbness, right? And what that is, if you've ever seen anyone on a TV game show where they are, you know, who's the current president of the United States? And they go, ah, 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 and you're like, it's Donald Trump, you fool. Uh, and that, by the way, I was talking about the person on the game show, not Donald, Donald Trump then. Let's not get political here. Um, you know, at that point, they have got game show dumbness. It's because the cameras are on them that they just forget everything and turn into like a jelly. So if you write stuff down, it will help you to get over that. So I would write down names, but also phrases. If you're going to be introducing people or introducing yourself, just write it down and go read through it just before you read it out and look at it if you have to. That's OK. Uh, and uh, so practice in the mirror, read it out, and then when you turn the microphone on, turn the music down. You can turn it off if you want, but certainly turn it down very low and don't shout. Speak slowly and clearly, but don't shout. As long as you turn the music down far enough, they will hear you. Uh, and I guess another tip is get their attention before you say what's important. It's all right to turn the music down and say, hello, hello everyone. Look, can I have your attention for a second, please? Uh, listen, this is important. And then when everyone's looking, do your bit. 
uh, because there's nothing worse than the DJ mumbling away and no one's listening anyway. So I hope that helps, Chris. Uh, all right then, any information Sam says about the next generation of CDJs? None at all, but uh, it's been a long time, hasn't it? I'm sure it won't be too long. Uh, so, uh, uh, yep, let's wait. Uh, will Tractor be coming out with a standalone S8? I don't think so. I really don't. I think, uh, I just don't think that'll happen. That's my personal opinion on that, but hey, you never know. Uh, so John uh, from Dublin is loving the stems on Virtual DJ. So uh, if you've uh, hit the like or the heart button, if you have uh, been playing with stems on Virtual DJ and you've been enjoying them, we have, we've been having a great time messing around with them. Uh, and there's some great videos online of people doing the same thing, mashing up I saw DJ Yoda. Actually, he was using uh, DJ Pro AI, uh, the algorithm kind of version that came out at the same time. He's mashing up the neighbor's soap opera theme tune with hip hop and stuff. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, right? Uh, he, he was like saying, well, that's a few hours I'm never gonna get back. If, if you don't know DJ Yoda, by the way, look him up. He's quite a, he's a very, very good DJ. But he's also very humorous with what he does. Uh, so if you're thinking, what's this stems all about? What's he talking about? Uh, this is stems. It is the, uh, way of separating vocals, drums, hi-hats as well, not just the kick drum but the hi-hats, uh, the melody and the bass line in your tracks in real time. Uh, so this is on Virtual DJ, uh, Virtual DJ released a version of it and we do have a video of it over on YouTube, you can go and find, uh, just search Virtual DJ 2021, you'll find our video somewhere near the top there. And uh, they've released this version, you see there you go, you can, you can have your pads to either isolate or mute all the uh, parts of the track and in real time. And one of the really good things is you can actually try this out for yourself for free because Virtual DJ Home is their version that you can just use on your laptop, not on your controller, and it's free. So why not go and download it and play with these stems? You just load a track up and you can get instant acapellas, instant instru instrumentals, instant mashups, acapella from one deck, music from another, and all that kind of thing. It is a lot of fun. So. Uh, so yeah, I did find stems to be great, and I'm sure we'll be seeing a hell of a lot more of them in the future. Uh, so Alfie says, what are your opinions on hooking up drum machines and guitar pedals to your DJ gear? A lot of people are doing it, aren't they? Uh, and uh, indeed, the Pioneer V10 mixer has got basically the equivalent of a, 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 an echo guitar pedal built into it because so many DJs were doing it. I think it's awesome. Anything to do to be more creative, I'm totally down totally down with. So, uh, all right then, Lee says, is there a popular best bang for your buck? DJ speaker, I want to upgrade from my standard PC speakers. Well, you, well, you won't go wrong with the KRK Rockets. You won't go wrong with Adam Audio's entry-level speakers. You won't go wrong, wrong with, um, who else can I think of that uh, I would go for? The, the very small Tannoy speakers are good. So there, there's three, KRK, Rockets, Adam Audio, Tannoy, look at those. Uh, they are, they're all very, very good for the money. Uh, so, okay. So if you've just joined us and you're in, well, no, if you've been watching since the beginning, uh, can you share this please? Just hit that share button. It really helps us to do this. If you have just joined us, maybe uh, you, didn't, you didn't realize we were live. Well, look, you can get notified when we're live. It's really, really easy. You've just got to subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, then click the notification. Or if you're on Facebook, just like the page and click show posts from this page first. And then you'll just get a little notification when we go live and you can join us live. Uh, but you can always watch the replay from the beginning uh, on both those channels uh, and, uh, and ask questions in the comments underneath afterwards as well. My team will always try and get back to you. Uh, all right then, so uh, this question is actually coming on Mixcloud. We can't put Mixcloud questions on the screen, but I can read them out. This is from uh, Fat Controller, who says, Hi Phil, I really enjoyed Steve Canuetto's Todd Terry tribute live stream. So for those of you that haven't seen this, it's on YouTube. Steve did uh, 33 years of Todd Terry being a producer. So Steve, my, D my DJ partner and a business partner, he played 33 Todd Terry tracks in an hour. He did it last Sunday. Uh, on our uh, Sunday live stream. You catch that every Sunday, by the way, at 5 p.m. London, uh, midday Eastern. Uh, and Steve did this one. It's on YouTube, so you can watch it there. It's really, really good. He did a great job of it. Anyway, Fat Controller says, I'd really like to know where to get samples uh, from uh, the, the ones like Todd Terry used in the live stream, where the samples are all in one track with hot cues. Ah, right, I get your question. So uh, what Steve was doing, he had a track with lots of really cool little samples from Todd Terry uh, songs uh, in it uh, and he had them all with cue points on so he could just jump from he had this track loaded on deck three and he could jump to the cue points very quickly so it's like eight samples and just going back to deck three mixing it in and dropping them over it's called a sample set so when you have uh, 
a load of samples in one place. It's called a sample set. Oh, by the way, a brother named Sherm says, oh my God, that was so good. Steve is so good, I had no idea. So someone else enjoyed that Todd Terry mix as well. So yeah, when you have all your samples together, it's called a sample set. It actually came from scratch mixing because scratch DJs used to have a piece of vinyl with all their favorite samples on it. And they would use that to scratch with so all the, all the big scratch noises, they wouldn't have to keep changing the record and they were all on one uh, piece of vinyl. So that's where it came from. It's called a sample set. Uh, and uh, so Steve being a scratch DJ and also being someone who used to DJ with samples before digital. So he used to have sample, uh, sample sets as well on a piece of vinyl. So Steve lo loves to do it, that, do it that way. And there's a lot to, to recommend uh, to have your own sample sets, to make your own sample sets. So uh, we actually have a course on it. So this is our courses page on digitaldjtips.com slash courses. Uh, and one of our courses is about making samples. So it's uh, make your own sample sets here. So if you're interested in learning how this happens, uh, you can click over here and have a look at this course that was made by Steve and myself. It teaches you all about that, how to make them yourself, where to find samples, how to compile them, how to edit them for free, uh, and how to make a sample set uh, and use it. So if you're interested in that, head over there and find that course. But great question, thank you for that one. Uh, all right then, Eric. Phil, what are your thoughts on the Mevo camera for, stu for streaming? Mevo is a little camera that is sold by a company owned by Vimeo, who funnily enough are the ones who we use to host all of our videos for our courses. Yeah, it's a great little camera. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a cool camera. You, you'll, you'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I can't answer this question for Saint uh, because I, uh, I've never used them. I, the people on the team who have, uh, like Steve, uh, are not available today to answer this question. So maybe you can help out on Twitch if you see this comment from Saint, who says, what um, are the best IEMs, which is in-ear monitors, uh, in conjunction with affordability and performance. I do know Laidback Luke, laid Luke just use, uses wired uh, Beats headphones to DJ with. So there you go. But no, I, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe if you're on Twitch, you can help out Saint61 uh, there. Uh, so Jonas, what's the best way to get the track listing done and onto Mixcloud smoothly? I'm exploring it and so far it seems a bit complicated. Track, artist, start and end time. Um, any ideas? Right, I'll show you. So Mixcloud is a platform that lets you share your DJ mixes legally, which therefore makes it a really, really good platform. Also, you can live stream on there, which is what we're doing now, which is why I've got people giving us questions about this over on, the, over on Mixcloud. I'm gonna show you what Mixcloud looks like when you upload a mix. So this is a mix I uploaded a, a week or two ago, and you get uh, your track list here, right? So this is the full track list of the mix. Uh, and it's really, really cool because when you're playing it, when you're playing the mix, uh, what happens here is uh, people can uh, see on their player, you get a player down the bottom here, people can see on their player uh, the name of the currently playing track, which is really cool. But also, better than that, what happens is Mixcloud can then pay the right royalties to the people whose music you've used, which is why it's legal. So you don't actually have to upload to Mixcloud the start and end times and all that stuff. All you need is a list of the track title, and the track name. You can do it in any text editor. So every, every operating system has a text editor. It's actually called text edit on a Mac. Uh, just get open a text document, do it in Google Drive or you know Google Docs or anything. Uh, write the name of the track dash the title. Name of track or rather name of artist dash title. Name of artist dash title. Do it all the way down for all your tracks. And then when you are uploading your mix to Mixcloud, just upload that, you can cut and paste it in. And what Mixcloud will do is give you a timeline with all the tracks with a little line on. And then when you're listening through your mix, you just drag the line to where the mix is for each track. So you don't have to know the start and end times and all that. Mixcloud will do that for you. It takes a minute to do a mix. Uh, and it's quite satisfying because you know that people are gonna be seeing those track titles when you do it. So try it once. I think you'll find it's a lot easier than you're worried about there. Uh, Jonas. All right then, so um, please hit those like and, and love buttons if you're having fun here today, people. I do like this. I do look forward to this at the end of a long day, and it has been a long day today. This week has been our quarterly meeting here at Digital DJ Tips when the whole team uh, plans what we're going to do for the next three months. So it's been pretty intense. Quite exciting, by the way, but pretty intense. So it's just good to just chat DJ at the end. Um, so Phil says, quick question. I've just sold my DDJ 800 as, I, as I'm upgrading. Will the person buying my controller need to download the free record? Recordbox software, or do they need my license? It's a difficult question because Recordbox has changed the way it all works at the moment, and uh, because of that, I'm not 100% sure. So I can think this through on my feet. 
I think it, I think the license is now with the unit. So I think as soon as they plug in, Record Box 6 will work with the DDJ 800. So I don't think they need the license key at all. Uh, I'm sure of that actually, Phil. So no, they should be good to go. Uh, all right then. Um, more of your questions. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. Can the Rain 12s be used with the 707M? So that's the controller we've got here today, the 707M. So look, the, re the thing with these kind of controllers is, uh, this is just a MIDI controller. This has got a lead, comes out the back, and heads off to your laptop. So if you want to control other stuff, you just plug other stuff into your computer. It doesn't have to go near here. So the thing with this one though is it's a four channel controller anyway. So it's already got a control over four channels. You have the DEX one, two, three, four. For that reason, I don't think it would be that easy to use it with the Rain 12s, which also are, are, are controllers. What you could do is just have, um, you know, external DEX or external CDJs here, and then they can plug in because this is a standalone mixer. So around the back of this, you've got the ability to plug that stuff in. But using it with extra DEX, I'm not sure you could do that. Maybe someone who's even more... Uh, Serato focused and technically inclined can me, to, than me can help out with that question. But to use uh, the Rain 12s, which are basically controllers, Rain, a Rain 12 is a controller. It's a controller without a mixer, just a, a deck. Uh, and it plugs in by USB to your computer to control uh, Serato decks. I don't know. I've got a feeling it might work, but I've never tried it. The Rain 12s have been nicked from here and taken to Steve Canuetto's studio because they scratch, they scratch things, they're motorized turntables, they're for scratch DJs. So uh, I've not, I, I haven't used them for a long time, so I wouldn't know the answer to that to be sure. It's a great question though. As I say, maybe someone else can help you over there in the comments uh, and get the answer to that for you, Carlos. Carlos is on Facebook, so if you're on Facebook and you can help Carlos, he's down in the comments, I'd love you to do that. Uh, all right then, so the next question is from DJ D-Man, who says, is the new Mark Scratch worth it after a year on the market and anything new coming out with those features and that price point? New Mark Scratch is an awesome little DJ controller, uh, sorry, an awesome little mixer, uh, which is uh, Serato focused. So you get Serato control vinyl with it and you get, uh, uh, you get, I think you get the Serato software with it actually as well. I'm not sure. No, I think you might need to buy the software. Can't remember offhand. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a great little mixer, really great little mixer. I'm just looking it up for you now to show you guys and girls a picture of it. Uh, it's a US 499, which is really cheap for such a mixer. Uh, and um, it's like a scaled down version of, you know, the Pioneer DJ MS9 or the Rain 70. Uh, but it's got everything on it that you need to scratch. Uh, all you need to do is add turntables. Uh, and uh, it's a really good value mixer. This is our review of it, by the way, over on, uh, on Digital DJ Tips. And you can always get reviews on Digital DJ Tips, by the way. We've reviewed everything. You just click the top corner there, and you type in what it is you want to, re want to read. So you want to see the DDJ800 review that we did? Type DDJ8, DDJ800 in at the top of your screen, uh, and it will pop up here. There you go. There's our uh, DDJ800. Uh, that's the course, actually, which is cool. So there's a course. We've got, got a course for that as well. Uh, but it will pop up here. There you go. There's the DDJ800 course. Uh, sorry, a review. So yeah, uh, there's, we've got video reviews and stuff as well. So if you ever wanted to see any piece of DJ gear uh, reviewed, just head over to Digital DJ Tips website and search for it. Uh, so yeah, amazing piece of gear even now. I'd say it would be timeless because Serato timecode vinyl will always work and mixers haven't changed much in two decades. So yeah, um, go for it. Don't worry that it's a year old at all. Um, so... Uh, okay, the next question, what would you say is the best website or app to download music? So, let's talk about downloading music. The cheapest places to download music are iTunes and Amazon. The best place for underground music is Beatport. And then there's TrackSource, there's Juno Download, and the specialist stores like that as well. So they're all great. If you really want to download a lot of music because you're DJing a lot, then join a record pool. BPM Supreme, DJ City, Promo Only, Extender Mix, all those kind of people, Zip DJ. Uh, and if you uh, want to build a record collection really quickly because you're just starting out in DJing, especially if you want to get a load of old material, just go and buy CDs, go and buy compilation CDs on, on eBay and stuff and rip them. Just get a, a CD ripper or a D DVD ripper and rip them into your, into your digital collection. It's a really cheap way of getting a big collection quickly. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, all right then, uh, so uh, the next question is from, 
uh, Matt, who says, any jobs going with you? I'd love a job in music. I wish there were, I wish there were, but, uh, but uh, no, we have no jobs going at the moment, I'm afraid. Tech One TV, what are your thoughts about AI versus manual DJing? Do you believe AI is gonna make it boring and too easy for DJs while they watch people dancing and only do 20% of the work they used to do before? Well, look, hand on heart, I think most of the job of a DJ is music programming. It's getting the music right. I think you can learn to mix. You can learn everything about mixing, but you can never know everything about the right record to play next. That's where the art is. That's where the truly creative DJs shine, by just knowing that right tune next and next. And that's a lifetime's work. None of us get close to being perfect at that. So no, I don't think AI will ever replace DJs because AI is reductive. AI will only do what, what's worked before, but it's a DJ's job to find out what's gonna to work today that's never been done before. So no, I don't, I think AI is great. Uh, I think it's awesome that there's all these tools to help us and it doesn't scare me one bit. Uh, all right then, so the next question is, uh, is just a thank you from Shailen, oh, you're very welcome. I'm a 14 year old DJ, I'm upgrading to a DDJ 800, I really can't wait. Uh, all right then, so, um, so, uh, hey Phil, does the Pioneer XDJ XZ or XZ have connection problems when used with Serato? It didn't with us, we found it worked fine. Uh, but if anyone else has got any problems with that, maybe go discuss them on our YouTube channel with Kevin down in there in the comments. But no, Kevin, we've not heard anything about that. Uh, a lot of you telling me who the President of the United States is, so thank you very much for that. DJ Mike Marquez says, uh, we're in the States and we think uh, the guy on the game show and Donald Trump are both fools. Uh, but uh, anyway, oh, here's another great uh, piece of advice for the microphone. Don't talk over vocals. Uh, yeah, really good advice. Any, never put vocals over vocals. In your mixing, don't put vocals over vocals. You know why in your mixing? I'll tell you why. In DJing, the music makes you move. The music goes straight past your head to your heart, right? And your, and your feet. But vocals make you think. They, they engage your head. Now, you can mix two tunes together and as long as they work together, it, it will still go to your heart, it will still go to your feet. But if they've both got vocals, you're asking your head to do two things at once and it just ruins it. That's the, the kind of reason why you should never mix vocals over vocals. Same reason why you should never talk over vocals. So thank you very much for that. And thank you very much everyone for chatting to each other in the comments. I'm seeing a lot of that going on as I look at the stream and it's what this is all about really. I'm just here to kind of curate it. And remember, if you want to ask questions and you're watching the replay, that's absolutely fine. Ben and Scott and myself and the rest of the team will be watching the comments underneath uh, and we'll answer your questions as best we can. Uh, but as you will notice, a lot of people will dive in there and help you anyway without us even getting close. And just one more time, if you are enjoying this, please do hit share. That's all we ask. Uh, hit that share button. It helps us to, to do this every week to get the word out. Uh, all right then, uh, Jamie, good question here from Jamie. Will Pioneer bring out another standalone this year or will we have to wait another year or more? Again, we have no word on that at all. Uh, and so we're just gonna have to wait and see, I'm afraid. You, I can guarantee you that when they do, we'll have the reviews on the day of release and all that stuff, but right now we don't, we don't know anything about that. Uh, all right then, um, so uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, scanning that lots of you are just having a good time and telling me, which is great, but it doesn't make for very good Q&A. Um, so uh, someone on our Facebook group on Global DJ Network, I currently use a DDJ SB2. I want to upgrade for my mobile DJ business. Should I go for an SR2? or an SX3 or any others. Uh, okay, so an SR2 will give you uh, basically a more professional version of the SB2, so that would be good. Uh, the SX3 Serato controller is pretty timeless nowadays. It's just one of the standard Serato controllers. You might wanna look at this one. Excuse the bang in there as I move around the office, which is the Pioneer DDJ1000 uh, SRT. This is kind of the flagship Serato controller from Pioneer at the moment, and it's a really nice controller. Uh, you probably would never need to replace that, at least not in the, in the near future, um, if you want that kind of look. Because with mobile DJing, a lot of it's about the look right, and uh, you know that just looks like DJ gear. It's got the same, the same platters on as pro DJ gear and stuff. Uh, so yeah, a few, few options there. Uh, all right then, so uh, Chris says, thanks for the great mic advice. We have a massive win. Uh, Liam and myself are doing a mixed cloud live stream to 17 primary schools in the area all next Friday. We're thinking out of the box to keep our DJ names in the public domain so people remember, remember us in lockdown. Wow, you and your son are doing a DJ set on Mixcloud live to 17 primary schools. That's absolutely brilliant. Do let us know how that goes on, Chris. I would love to know that. 
Um, all right then, so um, more advice on speakers. Mike says the Pioneer DM40 is a good and pretty uh, cheap too. So thank you very much. Uh, Howsy was late to the party, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, you're here now. That's the important thing. You can watch the whole thing from the beginning on the replay anyway. Uh, Rockville speakers are good for beginners, says someone on our Facebook page. Um, DJ Sapphire says virtual DJ is becoming a thing now. Uh, online presence is becoming a reality. Music rights have been a point of contention for me. What's your take on DJs having to place, pay so much money to the ASCAP just to DJ? I don't actually know about ASCAP because it's not in our country. Our country, the premises are licensed and the DJ doesn't need a license as long as they're playing in the premises that have got a public performance license. So that's on Facebook from DJ Sapphire. If you want to help... Uh, if you want to help her out over there, I just had to click the picture to see uh, whether you were a he or a she. I didn't look first time round, sorry DJ Sapphire. Uh, then please go and do that over there and, uh, and help her out. Um, so lots of love for Steve who did our Todd Terry mix. Steve C is a beast, says Command, Command Ninja. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, all right then, uh, one thing I would ask you to do regulars, don't post your question over and over again. It won't mean I'm more likely to answer it and it clogs things up. It just means I'm stand, standing here looking at stuff I've already read before. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right then, so um, the next question is, uh, it's just more praise for this scratch. Uh, it's way better than any Newmark gear and this is coming from someone who has a Nexus 2 st uh, set up at home. Great, so there's a lot of people there loving that. Stuart says, how do you root audio into OBS from Tractor Control S2? I've wired it back through my uh, Audient ID2 SoundCloud, but no audio. Um, what you can try and do is just not bother with the sound card. As long as you're, you're, long as you're broadcasting from the same laptop that you've got Tractor running on, just it's already got a wire between the two. Use a piece of software called Loopback or VB Wire, Loopback or VB Wire, um, which are both uh, designed to take that audio and let you feed it into OBS. Um, this is all covered in our live streaming made easy course, by the way, uh, but also we cover it on the, uh, on the website. So if you were to head over to Digital DJ Tips, let's do it together so I can just show you. Uh, again, go to the search bar at the top, type in uh, DJ Live Streaming, and you'll find that we've got uh, loads of articles about DJ Live Streaming there that we've done recently. And one of them is how to get great audio in your uh, live stream. So I'll just keep scrolling down here because as I say, we've got an awful lot of live stream stuff here. Uh, one of the, uh, here we go, two ways to get great sounding audio on your DJ live streams. Uh, so in here I explain to you, uh, look at that, 22,000 people have, uh, have used this. Uh, I explained to you a couple of ways, kind of the cheap way and the better way. Uh, this links into all our other DJ live streaming stuff as well. So if you want to have another uh, look at that, that might help you. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I hope you get some help from that. Uh, all right then, we are going to do just about 10 minutes more because uh, I know a lot of you are busy and a lot of you like to stay here and see if there's any nuggets that can help you at some point. So uh, I'm sorry for everyone who we haven't been able to answer, but look, we will answer you in the comments underneath. We try our hardest as the days go on after this to answer everyone. And please help each other as well down there. Uh, all right then, uh, so lots of you asking about native instruments. It happens every week. Are there any updates coming? We don't know anything. They haven't told us anything for a while, but... Uh, uh, but uh, but anyway, I didn't know Mixcloud played royalties, said Clio81. That's super awesome. Yeah, it is super awesome as well. Um, you can directly upload your track to playlist or your Serato playlist to Mixcloud, says Jack Attack. That's true, you can. Uh, so uh, a few of you saying that. I've just always found it easier to type it in. I'm, I'm a quick typer. It takes me a few seconds. Uh, but anyway, uh, so... Um, so we've got confirmation that the DDJ 800 does indeed unlock record box six there. So there's no need to worry about that. That person who is selling it, it's all good. Uh, uh, all right then. So very popular controller. A lot of people talking about the DDJ 800 down there in our comments. Um, so hi, Phil. You always give good advice to the younger, newer DJs. Do you think people starting to learn, uh, do you think people starting, you learn how to link two, tra two tracks together and mic work. Regards from an old time DJ. I think when you're starting to DJ, the main thing you need to learn is how to manually beat mix, how to get two tracks together in the mix. 
uh, and then you need to work, work out the basics of how DJ gear works. Remember our five ways, gear, music, techniques, playing out, promoting yourself. You have to learn all five. You can't follow DJ courses and DJ training that say, hey, we'll show you how to do all this cool mixing. Those courses are for people who can already DJ. You have to, have to cover all five. So gear, you have to understand how your gear works. And nowadays that means you have to understand how the audio goes into the computer and all that stuff. If you don't, you're DJing blind if anything goes wrong. So music, you have to have a very basic music collection and you have to know why you've got that music. And in fact, a lot of people starting DJing, they're, they're record collectors anyway and they come in with this huge collection, but that's just as bad as having no music because you haven't ever thought about that music as a DJ collection. So we always advise start from scratch, you know, take it all out from your DJ software, put the tracks in very carefully. You want a really small DJ collection that you're getting used to DJing with. So that's gear and music. Techniques, the first technique to learn, counting, timing, manual beat mixing. It's how we teach in all of our courses. Uh, playing out, this is the microphone stuff. This is the being able to set up and use your gear in a venue. You know, until you can do that, you can't play out. So that's important. And promoting yourself, you have to get past stage one. You have to have a DJ name. You have to have nowadays a logo. Uh, and you have to have a basic presence on Facebook or on Instagram. You know, you don't need to do too much. But once you've got those five things, what you find that happens is even if you've just been DJing two weeks, as soon as you've got a bit of knowledge in all those five areas, everything feeds into everything else and you learn much quicker. And that's why in the book, that's how we cover it. In the book, we have a, a chart which explains this uh, and uh, it's the five key areas of DJing. And there they are, five key steps of DJing. I know that's a bit bright, but it's the best I can do for you now. Uh, and it's on page three. That's how important it is to think about those five areas. You can get a free copy of this. Just sign up, digitaldjtips.com slash join. We'll give you one. Uh, so, so yeah, I think that's the important thing when you're starting DJing. Um, so streaming software, is, is Streamlab OBS on Mac preferable to OBS Studio? I don't think so. OBS Studio is, is what most people use. Streamlabs just adds loads, loads of bits on. Uh, I, would, I would learn to use uh, OBS Studio first. And if you find that useful and you want to look, you like the look of some of the things in Streamlabs, go for it. They're both free, by the way. Okay, next question. Let's do two or three more. Um, is there any way I can, anal I can uh, migrate analyzed music from DJ Pro 2 to Serato? I think uh, the DJ Conversion Utility will do that for you. Uh, and DJ Conversion Utility is run by a Dutch guy, Peter, uh, and you can learn about it on their Facebook page. This is their Facebook page. At, just search DJ Conversion uh, Utility on Facebook. I think they have a way of converting between, uh, between uh, DJ and other software. I'm pretty sure they do. The only reason I'm hesitating is that sometimes their, their conversion utilities only go one way. But look, we've got DJ there. I can see DJ in the top picture, but the arrow is only going one way there. So I don't know if it can take it out of DJ and into the other software. But give, go and ask. Go and ask on this page. They're very, very, um, they're very uh, uh, responsive and very friendly, and they'll help you out there with that one. Um, so the D, the new mark scratch doesn't come with the control vinyl. Oh yeah, thank you. Sorry, thank you for correcting me on that one. This is Serato control vinyl. You need this to put on your turntables. Uh, it's, they just look like normal records, but they haven't got music on. They've got uh, computer code. You need these to put onto your turntables to control the software. And then apparently it doesn't come with them. So thanks for correcting me on that. But it does come with Serato. So thank you very much for uh, that correction, Michael. Uh, all right then. Um, and let's just do one or two more of these. Uh, Phil, wasn't the Digital DJ Tips live stream on a Tuesday, says Ivo. On a Tuesday now, we will we still do Tuesday tips, but then we've got a particular subject. This was a new one we introduced on lockdown. Uh, we actually did it on a Friday in lockdown. And uh, it's an any questions one. So there's no, there's no I, I don't know what people are going to ask here. Um, we, just, we just chat. So this is an extra one. We moved it to Thursday because some places gigs started coming back and people DJ on a Friday, right? So we thought, nah, not a good place to keep, uh, not a good place to keep, uh, keep doing it. So we moved it. So DJ Switch over on Mixcloud. Hey Phil, is there a solution for streaming and mixing audio and video from the same MacBook? Uh, well, you just use streaming software. So you could use, we're using a piece of software called Ecamm Live at the moment, uh, where I can play audio if I want. I can, I've got sound effects. Do you want to hear a bicycle horn? There you go. Uh, I can play music as well. I've got all my cameras, you know, so you could do this. There's the, there's the empty studio. Hey, hello, I'm in the empty studio. 
so you could do all that. And we, when we DJ uh, out with our live streaming software, we use the same computer uh, to, to run Serato on, in my case. So yeah, you can, you can very much do that. Uh, it's all possible. Your computer's got to be powerful enough, of course. It's, it's quite, uh, quite processor intensive stuff, but, uh, but yeah. So Kip says, hi, Phil. Thank you for helping me get my DJ aspirations off the ground. When I'm streaming through OBS with my DDJ 400 and Soundflower, I get the master in my headphones. Any way to cut that out? Yeah, so, so we use a piece of software called Loopback and Loopback has got a way of cu cutting that out and I'm sure you can do it in any streaming, uh, any streaming software. Uh, sorry, any, any audio software. Let me show you Loopback if I can. Uh, actually, I don't think it's gonna let me do that. Um, yeah, so Loopback has got a little tick box that says mute audio when capturing. Uh, and that would, would do it for you. There pro there's probably something like that in there. Uh, I would imagine there is, but I don't know where you, where you would find it. But um, yeah, have a look at that. Uh, all right then. Uh, so the next question is, uh, maybe we do, do one or two more. Uh, the next one is for DJ Spiker, who says, hey Phil, I loved your detailed video on the Pioneer XDJ XZ or XZ. I'm still awaiting delivery and being a long time Serato user, I was wondering if I could use the DDJ SP1 as a way of controlling the effects and samples. Yes, I'm pretty sure you can because it doesn't matter about the XDJ XZ or XZ. Just plug the SP1 into the DDJ SP1. We've got one here actually. It's this little thing here. Is that the SP1? There's so many blinking units that are, I forget which is which. Uh, that's the SP1, isn't it people? Help me out. I've got, uh, I've got dumbness going on here because we're live. You know, we were talking about it earlier, weren't we? Uh, these units just plug in via USB directly into the laptop, so you can map these to do what you want. Uh, so yeah, you shouldn't have any problem using that with your new Pioneer XDJ XZ. By the way, if you haven't seen our Pioneer XDJ XZ training, uh, it, is, uh, it is pretty crazy. It's totally free. Uh, we did a, a, we called it a training tutorial because we're getting so many questions about the Pioneer uh, DDJ uh, XDJ XZ. We are, literally were getting so many questions about it uh, that we decided to do a special training tutorial on it. And this is what it looks like over on YouTube. Uh, and uh, you can forget all this stuff here. This is just our back end stuff. But this is the video. So if you go and search for Pioneer DJ XDJ XZ, uh, you'll find this video here. Look, it's two hours long. I really go into a lot of detail here on this uh, and people have, uh, people have really loved this. So if you're interested in buying this, it's just a good way of seeing if it's for you, right? You don't have to, don't have to um, you know, watch reviews where they don't really cover everything. I literally cover everything. I go through every menu, every control, everything. Uh, so, and then when it arrives, you'll know how to use it, right? Before, uh, before it's arrived, you can hit the ground running. Uh, all right then. Uh, so Tim says, do you think up uploaded videos are better than live streams? I think they've both got their place, Tim. I think live streams are great, but if you can archive the live stream and then have it on your YouTube channel as well afterwards, great. Uh, I don't think there's any issue with that at all. Uh, all right then. So, uh, hi Phil, could you please show us how to use manual loops to shorten loops from the front rather than the back, like auto loop? Uh, it's really easy. So you just hold the loop in or loop out button, certainly on Serato it's easy, and I think it's the same when it, on CDJs. You hold the loop in button and move the jog wheel when you're in manual loop mode and it'll move the start, or hold the loop out and move the jog wheel if you wanna change the loop out point. So uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, Virgil says, I just got the Prime 2 last month and the sound quality is better than the new Mark Mix Track, Plat Mix Track Platinum. Good, I'm glad you are, uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's a great piece of kit. Um, so Salvation is just giving thumbs up for when you nail a beat mix for the first time. It's like riding a bike, getting that beat mix right for the first time. Uh, it really is. Uh, all right, people, look, I know a lot of you have asked questions I haven't been able to answer, but it is, they do get so busy, these live streams. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here. And if you haven't had your question answered, just ask it underneath on the comments on YouTube or on our Facebook page, and we will get to you as quickly as we can on that. If you want a copy of the book, then head over to digitaldjtips.com slash join, or just go to the website, and on the website you'll find adverts that let you join from there if you uh, want to do it that way. Uh, for instance, here we go. Get your free DJ gear guide and Amazon bestseller. Uh, join and download. You click on here, put your email address in there, uh, and we will send it to you. It's as simple as that. So all that's left for me to say is, if you have enjoyed this, all we ask is that you hit that share button, subscribe, and click notification, or 
follow and click show posts first and then you can watch these live especially if you're watching on the replay if you have joined us late the replay will be live very soon and you can watch the whole lot from the beginning uh, so get good get out there make the moments i'll see you on sunday uh, at exactly this time 10 minutes from now wherever you are in the world 10 minutes from now come back to this channel unless you're on facebook if you're on facebook go over to youtube or mixcloud live instead uh, but on all the other channels just come back then uh, and i'm going to be doing an hour live stream mix from our pool from our swimming pool in our house in our holiday home where we are actually going tonight we're leaving tonight to go over there for a nice long weekend which is what we like to do in this time of year uh, and i would be dragging my dj gear along with me and doing a uh, a, a summer poolside house mix so if you want to chill out and hear some uh, sunshine vibes join me then if not join me next tuesday or thursday same time as now uh, when we'll be talking dj world tech music gear playing out all that stuff once more i don't know what the topic will be on tuesday tips next week but uh but we will uh, we'll find something exciting to share with you anyway once more get good get out there make the moments see you very soon